thanks for dropping in. These are a few of my twist lock box designs. If you've followed the channel for a while, you know that these tricky containers are sealed with a hidden spring-loaded rack and pinion mechanism. To release the lock, give the top of the box a twist and the lid will come right off. Opening the box reveals not only its contents, but the mechanism that made it all work. In this video, I'm releasing a new twist lock design. And here it is. Okay, it looks a little plain, but that's intentional. This is the twist lock photo box, which is designed to be personalized with your own treasured photos. Like this box, featuring landscapes from my recent trip to Ireland. But we aren't limited to only photos. This copy uses 3D printed panels with exposed infill patterns in protopasta filaments, triangular infill in Wonder Blue Rainbow, 3D cubic infill in Forest Fantasy Green, hexagonal infill in Gold Dust Translucent, and gyroid infill in Candy Apple Metallic Red. This print also uses a variation of the box with large cutouts on each side. Use this for see-through panels or 3D printed lithographs. This design is also good for HueForge prints. HueForge is a program that transforms 2D images into 3D printable STLs. It uses super thin layers to visually mix colors in unexpected ways. I've only started learning HueForge myself, but here's my first print, a grayscale rendition of my photo from the Cliffs of Moher. These prints by Pesliz from MakerDeck and Twitch are a far better demonstration of what HueForge can do. I suspect that in the future, we might even see some cool twist lock box panels from her. It's been a while since I've demoed how to assemble one of these twist lock boxes, so let's build another copy. We're going to need four base sides, four base clips, a base bottom, a lid, two latches, a spring, and a lid topper. These are all easy parts to print and require no supports, but there are a few tips to keep in mind. First, the base clips will need to flex. I've had good results printing them in two perimeters with 0% infill. You can even drop the top and bottom layers, since the ends of the clip will be hidden during assembly. When printing the spring, increase your perimeter count until the spring arms are completely solid. Three perimeters will probably work. Add brims to keep parts from curling off your print bed. These parts must remain flat to work correctly. And finally, I'd avoid using silk or matte filaments on the mechanical parts of this design. These tend to be more brittle than regular filaments. Okay, let's get to building. First, we'll take two base sides and line them up like this. Now we can snap on a clip to hold these sides together. Let's repeat that with the two remaining sides so we'll have two separate corners. The base bottom slides between these two assemblies inside a small trench like this. At this point, you'll want to add any rigid inserts, like 3D printed panels. But I'm planning on adding photos to this print, and those are flexible enough to add later in the assembly. So instead, I'll finish locking this base in with the last two clips. Okay, the base is done. Note that we didn't use any glue or hardware. With some careful prying, it's possible to disassemble the base in the future and switch out any panels or parts you might want. Now let's move on to the lid. First, we'll add the latches, which should slide easily within these two tracks. Make sure that the teeth of the latches point toward the center of the lid. Next, we'll add the spring. You can secure the spring with either glue or M3 bolts that are six to eight millimeters long. If you're adding glue, apply it only to the raised lip that runs around the outer edge of the spring and be extra careful around these two notch areas. Once the spring is secure, 
we'll need to align it with the latches. Lift the center of the spring like this, so the latches are free to slide. Then slide both of the latches against the outside wall of the lid. Now, we'll rotate the spring clockwise just enough so that it will mesh with the latches in their current position. If everything is positioned correctly, the latches will remain firmly pressed against the lid wall, and the spring will be permanently under tension. Now we'll add the topper, which snaps onto the hexagonal peg at the top of the spring. It's a tight fit, but I recommend adding glue here anyway. Okay, let's make sure the mechanism's working. Looks good. Last but not least, it's time to add the photos. These photos of Zelda have been trimmed to 87 by 55 millimeters. That's just small enough to fit in the frame, but still long enough to slide under the clips. I could add a little glue here, but it seems to be holding fine as is. And we're done. Well, with this one at least. I have a lot of planned gifts centered around this design, so I better get to work. Until next time, happy printing and thanks for stopping by. Thanks for sticking around till the end. Since you did, I have an update to my pumpkin chunkin catapult. This fall model is getting a winter update. It now launches mini snowballs, as well as mini presents. The winter update also includes a new target. If you knock this down, you get a snowman. Just like with the previous targets, the snowmen have a little base to help in cases where the targets just want to slide rather than topple. Enjoy creating a catapult mess for yet another season.